Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Igniter for RESTful API development using Silt Authentication. Now inside this video, we will create controller and model settings for our first phase of API development. If I back to editor, inside the last video, we had created a migration and also migrated to create a dynamic table inside database. Now this time, inside this video, we will set up our API controller as well as model. So if I go inside app folder, controllers, so right now inside this controllers folder, we have all the default controllers what basically it creates when we install our code grant for application. Now here, as we know that inside this first phase of API development, we will create some APIs and these APIs seems to be a student management system, so we will create an API controller. So either we can create a normal controller as what we have here for this home.php but inside code data for application way to create an API controller and to create an API controller way to pass an extra flag called RESTful. So first of all, before creating API controller, let's see that what is the difference between a normal controller and a RESTful controller. So if I go to terminal, let's say that php spark let's say make controller and if i create let's say sites and i will pass suffix as a flag which means it will create sites controller.php if i press enter now controller has been created back to editor here we have sites controller and we can see that this is a normal skeleton of a controller but if we are working with API, it means we want a RESTful API controller. So to create an API controller, it will be a bit different. Let's go to terminal. So before creating API controller, let's open the help, help manual of make controller command. So php spark help make controller. If I press enter, so inside these options, here we can see here we have a RESTful flag. Once we use this RESTful flag, then it will create a RESTful controller. And once RESTful controller will be created, so instead of inheriting or extending this base controller, it will extend a resource controller. Let's create here. So what I will do, let's say php spark make controller. And if I pass, let's say product i1 suffix it means product controller.php and also if i pass let's say restful press enter so we can see product controller.php now created inside controllers folder back to editor and if i open this controller file look at here instead of extending base controller inside product controller we have resource controller and also, inside the skeleton of this API controller, we have several different different methods auto-generated. So this is the difference between a RESTful controller as well as a normal controller. Now let's see that if we are interested to create an API controller for all these APIs development process. So what I will do? First of all, I will create an API folder inside this controllers folder and inside that API folder, we want API controller.php and that API controller.php file will be a RESTful controller. Back to terminal. So let's say php spark make controller and I want an API folder. So this is the folder name forward slash next API will be the class name also we want to suffix as a flag which means that it will create api controller.php and also this will be not be a normal controller it will be restful controller so before executing this command let's copy it here back to slide open a new tab so this is the command we are executing to create our api controller file php spark make controller this is the folder name this is our controller class name component title automatically gets added and this is for restful controller go here press enter now as we can see that api controller created inside api folder 
So inside controllers, here we have a folder called API and inside this API controller, now we can see we have our resource controller. So as we know that we need to create our APIs in these patterns. So what I will do, I will go and remove all these predefined methods from this class because we will define our methods in our custom way what we need for this API development processes. Now next, I will start the development of processes. So in the very beginning, we want to create our add student API. So we want our add student method. Go here, go inside API controller, let's say public function and let's say add student. This method will be hit using post request type and inside this method we will accept our form data and inside form data we need like the data as name, email, phone and profile image. So to call add student API the method will be add student and this method will execute using post request type. So this will be our first method. Now next we have our list students API. Next create our next method that is public function list students and this method will hit using get request type and inside this method will not pass anything instead when we call this method it will return all the students what we'll have inside our database table. Go back to slide. Now the next method we need that is single student details API. So inside this method we'll pass a student ID and on the behalf of that we need to return our student information. Back to editor. So here let's say public function single student data and inside this method we need to pass student id so that on the behalf of this id we need to actually return only a single specific student data and this method will hit using get request type single student data if i write here single line comment list all students here let's say save student data to table back to slide now the next method we need that is update student api go here let's create another method that is public function update student and when we call this method we'll use put request type so while calling this method we need to pass student id as well as updated data so inside ul we need to pass student id as well as inside this method we'll pass form data so this method will be used to update update student existing data now next the final method we need to delete student api go here let's say that public function delete student this method will be called using delete request type and also while calling this method we need to pass student id into url and what this method will do this method will delete student data from table so successfully now we have our api controller inside this api folder and inside this controller we have all needed methods now next we'll create a model class which will be associated with students table back to terminal to create a model class we'll use make model command if i type php spark press enter so inside generators here we can see here we have a command called make model look at its single line description it generates a new model file so as we know that inside our database here we have the table name called students and one more thing while creating any model we need to pass the model class name as singular so here this is plural that is students but while creating model we need to pass our model class name as student only so go here let's use make model command php spark make model it will be student and i will pass suffix it means 
it will create studentmodel.php. Press enter. So as you can see that and I think we have some mistake because it has created student.php but we want that it should be created called studentmodel.php. So what I will do, first I will delete this file. So go inside models folder student.php, click on delete. I have deleted that. Now let's create and I think we have here a mistake that is su double fix press enter. So as we can see, studentmodel.php now created inside models folder. Back to editor. Now here as we can see that this is our model class file and inside here the table name called students. In your case, if the table name is different, something called table underscore or wp underscore. So please mention the table name here, something like that. So in this case, we have students as the table name. Now next, we need to go inside this allot fields. Here inside this array, we need to pass our column name, means column names, what we have inside this table. So inside our table called students, we have the column name as name email, phone and profile image. So all those columns where we need value to insert our data inside this table, those column names will be mentioned inside this array. So as we know that when we create any student for this table, ID will be auto-generated. So this column we are not going to mention inside this allot fields. So here name, email, next one we have called phone phone and profile image. So to insert any new student inside our students table, these are the columns where we need value. So successfully, now we have our model. So to use this model, we need to load inside our controller file. So here, let's say use student model. So successfully as you can see that now we have loaded our student model inside this API controller. So once we do any database operation, only we need to create the object of that model and interact with student's database table. So successfully, by the help of this video, now we have done all the settings for controller and model. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.